welcome to another edition of Valley Chats brought to you by First Bank. Today we've got Ty Jerome and Cam Johnson joining us. Guys, thank you so much for spending a little bit of time with us today. I think first things first, we just have to check in and see how you guys are doing. So Cam, why don't we start with you? How's everything going in your world? Um, everything's going well so far. I mean, as well as it can go. Um, just at home. Um, getting as many workouts in as I can with whatever resources I can and then just kind of chilling for the rest. Yeah, I think Cam said it best as well as it can go. You know, um, I'm healthy. My family's healthy, so can't complain. And like Cam said, I've got some weight room equipment in my house, got a bike. So I'm just start, trying to stay in shape and uh, use this time to focus on my body. Yeah, so what are some of the things you're doing there? Like how are you working out considering you are stuck at home? Uh, so I got some, like I said, built a mini weight room in here, um, got the Peloton bike. So focusing on different ways to get in better shape, um, with the bike, uh, little weight room circuits, all, all different types of things like that. And Cam, I know you did a couple videos for the Suns trying to show some kids how to do some at home workouts. Are you doing those workouts yourself or what are you doing to stay in shape? Um, I do them a little bit, I guess. But um, I'd say mostly just using the weights that I have around the house, doing the circuits that the strength coaches sent to us. And then I got this like little strip of back patio that I just do some some work on, you know, some some conditioning work, stuff like that. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to stay as busy as I can. So what else are you guys doing to kind of pass the time? Because you can only work out so much throughout the day before that becomes a little bit boring, too. So. Are you watching new shows? Are you reading books? Cam, let's start with you. First of all, I've been sleeping a lot more than like I usually would during season. So like sleep hours are way up, which is kind of good. Um, outside of that, I've just been watching TV shows and there's a bunch of them. So I'm not even going to begin to start naming them. Um, playing video games, um, watching movies, like going through movie series. Um, and then reading some books here and there. I went down, I said this before in an interview, but I went down um, kind of a rabbit hole with some space books. So that took up a pretty good chunk of my time a couple weeks ago. What are you learning? Um, it was just a lot. It was a lot about the space and gravity and the magnitude of everything and how it all works together. Ty, what about you? Um, yeah, I haven't been reading any space books, but um, I've <laughs> um, but no, I've watched every Marvel movie. I went back and wa I'm watching them in order so I can understand them. Like before this, I only saw the Avengers and now I went back and I'm watching them all in order. Um, and then been playing more video games too. And like Cam said, sleep hours are definitely way up. So just time to, more time to do things that I wouldn't normally be able to do in season, like watch movies, play some more video games, but nothing, nothing like spectacular. And are, are you guys with your families? Where are you at? Who are you quarantining with? Ty, you can start. Uh, I'm still in Phoenix. My family's in New York, and I was thinking about going there, but it's pretty bad over there. So I said, my girlfriend's out here with me, so we decided to stay out here. Very cool. Cam? That's cute. Um, my, uh, I was thinking about going back to Pittsburgh with my family, and I still might, but right now I'm in Phoenix. Um, my buddy from high school, he lives with me, so we've just been chilling. Well, that's good. I'm glad that you guys have somebody to help you pass the time because that obviously makes things a little bit better. So one of the things I did want to ask you guys about is just kind of your mental space right now. I know it's been a pretty big topic because this is not something anybody is used to being used to at all. You know what I mean? Like tackling this is, is very unnormal for most of us. So how are you handling this mentally and what are you doing to kind of keep that side of your spirit high? Cam, you can start. Um, I feel like I'm ready at any point to start back up again. Like, I mean, everybody's excited for it, but you know, I might be a little bit in a little bit worse shape than I was before and might have to get back to a certain point. But overall, like, I feel like I'm ready to get back out there. And, and in the meantime, you know, I'm just going to try to stay positive and, and do what I can to, to stop, you know, the spread of this or to help other people. Um, but, you know, I'm not trying to think about it too, too much because, you know, that's that's not the best thing to do right now. Um, I think the unknown is the scariest part. So for us, like not knowing 
when is, is it going to, is the season going to resume? When is the season going to resume? What's going to happen? Obviously, um, financially, you wonder, like, what's going to happen with all that money? But all these different things to, that we don't know is going to happen. I think for me, um, I've just been trying to focus on using this time to get better. So focus on my body, uh, trying to stick to as much as my daily routine as possible. So wake up, work out. Um, don't just sleep in all day. Um, I'm just trying to trying to stick to trying to make this time as normal as, as I possibly can. And um, like Cam said, stay isolated. Um, trying to do my part to stop the cause, um, but use Zoom, FaceTime, uh, Xbox Live, all the different things to still be connected with uh, my friends and family and all that. Yeah. So let's talk about being connected because I know obviously during this time you would be in the locker rooms, traveling, doing all the things with your teammates that you normally would on this date. So how are you staying connected to your teammates? How are you staying connected to the coaching staff and the training staff? Um, well, like Cam said, they sent us some workouts to do. And then uh, teammates, you know, we got FaceTime, uh, play video games together, uh, text each other here and there. So. It's not the same. Like, you know, Cam texted me the other day. It's like, you never realized. Or I saw, I think he posted a story on his Instagram the other day. Like, you don't realize how valuable, like, every single person is in your life. It's just your daily interactions with them. Um, and that, I couldn't agree more. Like, just doesn't, it can't uh, compare to the daily interaction you have in, in the locker room. It's like little laughs, little jokes, all that. Um, but, yeah, just playing video games together, texting, FaceTimes, uh, little things. But it's definitely not the same. Uh, yeah, I agree. Um, it's not the same, and the level of interaction we have is not the same. But at the same time, I don't feel like we all expect it to be quite the same right now because, um, you know, we, we'll talk to each other and, and we'll, you know, check in with each other, see how everybody's doing. Um, but I think everybody's just kind of taking this time to kind of focus on themselves and, 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 and work on themselves. Um, but, you know, staying connected with family is very important. So that's one of the things I've definitely been doing. Um, my group FaceTimes with them probably every day for, for any extended period of time. Um, and then making sure, you know, like my grandparents are okay and stuff like that is, is big. Yeah, group FaceTimes have been a godsend here during this time. It's been so much fun to be able to like get a group of people together and have that kind of social interaction that you kind of typically would throughout your life. So I, I love group FaceTime for sure. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to hear from Daniel Herrera, a big time Phoenix Suns fan. You're watching Valley Chats brought to you by First Bank. So stay with us. I feel a transformation coming within our culture of our team, our city, and now our arena. Valley boys and girls, the future is looking super bright. Great junior and thunderous left hand. This is our house. Make this your house. Do you want to win tickets to every Suns home game next season for free? Just watch and win. Tune into the remaining Twitch 2K streams and Suns replays on Fox Sports Arizona and look for a special code word. Enter the code word online at suns.com slash watch or on the Suns and Talking Stick Resort Arena app. Don't miss your chance to win two PayPal six-man season ticket memberships for next season. Enter right now using the code word on the screen. Hey everyone and welcome back to Valley Chats brought to you by First Bank. I'm Lindsay Smith and I have a very special guest with me right now, Daniel Herrera. He's a PayPal six-man season ticket member since 2012. Daniel, thanks for hanging out with us today. How are you? I'm doing great and yourself. I'm doing really well. So I hear you have a really great story that you want to share with all of us. So tell us your story. Uh, definitely. One of my biggest stories, actually, one of the best memories I had, actually, uh, was during the State of the Union for the six man members uh, over the summer of 2016, uh, just before the season started. Uh, they were having a contest for either the Mexico games or for Suns Media Day. And I put my name in the, ba in the basketball and Tom Banner's out calling names. First name he draws out, Daniel Herrera. I started jumping up and down, just start yelling, screaming all over the place. I couldn't believe it. Uh, the one something like that, uh, especially just media day. Uh, that was just huge alone to be the next players. Run up there, Tom Banner's like, that guy's excited. And then 
a few months later, then I got to do the Suns Media Day. I got to see the players, get their scans for 2K, I take a few photos as well. And then I actually got the interview with uh, Tom and Tom. That was something I wasn't told of before. I feel like I hit the half-court shot. This is awesome. <laughs> this is a great day. Everyone's in high spirits. Looking to do a great season. And that was a really cool experience, just getting to go through a few questions, break down my hopes of what the season were. Uh, it was just definitely an experience to remember. Uh, to this day, it's still my most liked photo on my Instagram. Nice. Well, we're glad we could help support your social media efforts. <laughs> so I know you're a big fan of 2K. I know you play a lot. So getting to see the scans of those players and what goes on behind the scenes, like how cool was that? It was really cool. It was interesting, in fact, how much detail actually goes into it. That was something I really didn't expect. I assumed it was kind of just created from nothing. Um, the fact that they actually scanned them in general definitely goes a lot easier than trying to scan myself in the game. Yeah, the technology on those is quite intense. They definitely don't leave any room for error, which is why I feel like 2K in general has gotten so much better over the past few years, just the how realistic each player looks. So, okay, my next question is, when you play 2K, do you play with the Phoenix Suns, and how do you do? I play with the Phoenix Suns religiously. Uh, that is the main team and only team I use for my online record. Uh, no matter what, I can't imagine using another team. Um, I actually do very well uh, with the Phoenix Suns. I think what catches a lot of people off guard is if you do know the timings and the plays and you work at it a lot, um, you could actually surprise a lot of people. Uh, so I definitely get a few, a few victories over some higher tiers. How has it been this year playing with all of the new faces on this team and all of our young rookies? It was definitely been an adjustment. Uh, 2K needs to work on some of the players' ratings a little bit. Uh, but it's gone really well. Uh, Aaron Baines is probably one of my most go-tos. I think I probably upset a few people with how many greens I get with him. <laughs> That's amazing. All right, Daniel, the last thing I have for you, you have an opportunity right now to ask Cam Johnson and Ty Jerome anything you want to ask them. So what question are you going to ask? Uh, my cam question for Cam and Ty is actually, do they have shooter around for brights uh, due to the universities they went to? And who holds the lead in it if they do? That's a great question. I am going to guess that the answer is yes. And uh, hopefully we will find out some good uh, behind the scenes info when they come back and join us. Daniel, thank you again so much for joining us. This has been really fun and something that we really enjoy being able to bring to our new series called Valley Chat. So stay tuned and we'll get your question answered up next. The Valley. El Valle. This is who we are. A community bound by perseverance and tested by life in the desert. We are fighters and innovators. Here's Bang to the front With the common goal of a better tomorrow. And when we get knocked down, we get back up. When we are challenged, we are ready. It's good! She got it! The GOAT delivers again! In dark times, we know that if we pull together, we will rise again. And together, we will be stronger. Because together, hope will thrive. Together, we are the Valley. Chats brought to you by First Bank. Our guests are Cam Johnson and Ty Jerome. And guys, we just had a big time Suns fan join us and he had a question he wanted to ask you. So Daniel wants to know if you guys have any sort of competition between each other or side bets based on the schools you went to and for bragging rights. So what's, what's going on there between you guys? Got any uh, little friendly competitions happening? Um, well, Carolina and UVA played each other twice this past basketball season. Um, and that was the main bragging right, you know, portion of this year. You know, our quote-unquote little brothers playing against each other. Um, and unfortunately, it did not go in my favor. And, you know, the first one, they, 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 they got us. But the second one was real close, came down to a buzzer beater. I was at that game, and it was kind of uh, gut-wrenching for myself and the players involved. But uh, Ty definitely enjoyed that. Yeah, no, I definitely enjoyed both games. Kind of similar to when we played them at their place when we were both there last year. I really like it. 
Um, yeah, no, so definitely um, UNC probably has a richer tradition of basketball maybe, but, you know, right. since Coach Bennett has been there, it really hasn't been that close. Uh, yeah, Sam, you feel like you look like you want to say something. <laughs> you know, I do, I do, but I'm not going to stoop down to that level. I'm not going to be mudslinging out here. Uh, UVA's had a lot of success recently, and that's just a credit to those guys. And Carolina's had their history of success, and that's a credit to the, all the people involved with that, and I'm going to leave it at that. What a guy. What a guy. <laughs> I love it. All right, guys. Well, while we're already on some fun chat, let's keep going on that. So the first thing I want to know about, Ty, are your TikToks. You have full, full, you jumped right on in <laughs> on this TikTok game. So tell me a little bit about how fun that has been for you and, and where you're getting kind of your creative ideas from. So TikTok, like when we were on the road this year and stuff, I would be on my phone, like on the planes or on the bus, whatever to practice and shoot around and stuff. And I would just be on TikTok all the time, like with my headphones in, watching TikTok videos. And I was like, man, one day I'm going to start making TikToks. And then when this, all this quarantine stuff happened, I was sitting on the couch and I was like, you know what, I'm going to make a TikTok. TikTok number four, yeah! So that's how it started. Um, and I just decided to just do whatever came to my mind. Like, I'm, you know, I, mean, I don't really spend time like, um, I got to do one take. That's it. I can't spend time. I can't, even if I have all the free time in the world, I can't sit there and spend time about my TikTok. So I had to just do one take videos, whatever came to my mind. Um, and then that kind of died off recently though, because I, I wasn't going to become as famous on TikTok as I would have liked to be. So I kind of stopped a little bit. I mean, consistency is key and we all enjoy it. So you got to keep going. I still think your first one was probably um, my favorite, the challenge one about like hitting yourself <laughs> in the head and pinching your nose or something at the same time. New TikTok challenge. I bet you can't smack yourself in the head and lick your nose and pinch your ear all at the same time. It was out of control. Cam, are we going to see you on TikTok soon? Um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised. Actually, I would. But there's a small chance. There's a very small chance. But there is a chance. Um, I don't know if I'll get to the same level as Ty. I mean, you could just tell, you know, Ty's level of creativity. Um, he probably sits there, thinks about it for about 25 seconds, and then starts recording, and then ends the recording and uploads it. I think that's kind of his strategy. Um, and I think, Ty, if you stick with it, bro, you, you'll get there, man. You just, you just stay in the lab, man. You know how it goes. Um, but if I go home and I have my brothers around me, then there might be some original content being thrown around. Nice. Looking forward to it. You know you guys can do TikToks together too, right? Like a duet, right? Yeah. Like Ty can, Ty can post one and then you can post one in the exact same way, like double box almost. So you guys could start uh, putting your mind power together here. Okay, speaking of social media, did you guys see that Coach Monty is on Instagram now? I know, right? That's what I said. How long has it been? I think it's been like just a month. So I don't know if he started it right before the stay at home mandates or um, during it, but he is on Instagram. Dad underscore in underscore the young bucks. So, I mean, that's a perfect <laughs> for coach too. You guys got to look him up and find out um, what's going on with his Instagram page. He's actually really active on there. Are you surprised? I was so shocked. I'm surprised. I'm surprised. Yeah, I'm shocked too. It must be, you know, this cor this quarantine. This is to definitely, um, this is definitely uh, giving people uh, new opportunities to try many new things, and he's taking up Instagram. So good for coach. Yes, good for coach. Good to him. Hope we'll go well for him. Continue throughout the rest of the season or next season when it comes back. Okay, so before we go to break, the one thing I want to ask you guys is about the Frank Kaminsky birthday drive-by celebration. You guys were both a part of that. How fun was it to be able to still celebrate your teammates in an innovative kind of way? Oh, it was, it was cool. It was cool. Um, definitely, um, we got to all drive by I think it was my first uh, drive-by birthday parade, uh, whatever you want to call it, that I've ever been to. So definitely was able to do something for the first time. And uh, I, hope, I hope Frank got a little bit of joy out of it. <laughs> Hi! I miss you. Yeah. Hey, I'll show up later. It was definitely um, an experience. 
um, when we pulled away to like start the parade, there was a roundabout, um, like a quarter of a mile after we started. And I was, I was following Ty and I was looking down in my car. And then when I looked up, Ty's car was gone in the roundabout. And there was two cars in front of me because I had to let them pass, like, you know, before I could turn left and get on the road. Um, and I was, I had a moment of panic where I was like, if I lose Ty in this parade, like I just cut off half the parade. So there was definitely a moment of, am I gonna mess this whole thing up? But I found this car, made it. Only thing was it went by so fast. It was like, I didn't quite know where we were going. Then boom, there was Frank to my right. And then boom, he was gone. And I was like, is that it? Um, but I was, you know, I was happy, you know, that we could do something for him on his birthday. It just was definitely pretty unique. Yeah, I thought it was really cool the way that you guys all came together to still celebrate him. I'm in the same boat. My birthday is this month as well. So I will be celebrating at home. Um, so it's different for all of us who have April birthdays for sure. But uh, glad to see you guys making the most out of it. All right, we're going to take another quick break and we come back. We will talk about your rookie season to this point. So stay with us. This is Valley Chats brought to you by First Day. I feel a transformation coming within our culture of our team, our city, and now our arena. Valley boys and girls, the city is continuing to grow. The future is looking super bright as this transformation comes along, and it's only going to be up from here. We have something special going on here. People are going to love coming here, and we're going to start a big thing here. The team is transforming, and this building is going to transform along with them. This is our house. Make this your house. Welcome back to Valley Chats, brought to you by First Bank. All right, Cam and Ty, we are going to talk about your rookie seasons to this point. So it's been a very unique season for you guys. You haven't yet been able to finish that rookie season. But to this point so far, just what have you guys noticed are the biggest differences between college ball, NBA ball, sort of that just learning curve and all the different things you guys are going through as rookies to navigate this NBA life. Ty, we can start with you. Um, yeah, the game's definitely faster. Um, there's obviously more talent on the floor. Um, you know, usually one through five are going to be able to, definitely one through four are going to be able to shoot at the floor, going to be more spaced. Uh, everyone's more athletic and stronger at every position. So it's just a higher level of basketball. Um, similar to the jump from high school to college. So, you know, every time you take your jump, the talent's going to be better, obviously. Um, and then I think the biggest thing is the length of games. Um, so trying to take care of your body for 82 games. Like for me, um, I was kind of fighting up a battle. I got hurt in the preseason. Uh, so, um, but definitely taking care of your body for 82 games is uh, definitely a big thing. Let me just start by saying, of course, the pace is going to be faster for Ty because he played at Virginia, which is the king of moving at zero miles per hour. Um, but I definitely agree that the pace is different, um, the spacing is way different, and kind of just the concepts that, that the team operates around. Um, but I think the biggest challenge was the length of games um, and, and how many there were, and then just the, the, the constant coming and going of them, especially when you were kind of finding yourself in a difficult time whether you're coming off an injury or kind of slumping um you didn't really have as many practices in between games to kind of get yourself back on track or to recover or just to shoot your way out of whatever problems you're having um but outside of that I think everything's been pretty good I really liked our group and I think um, we kind of had a pretty good camaraderie between us and our coaching staff as well um so overall so far it's been real enjoyable um, and I'm looking forward to continuing if we get the opportunity all right, Cam, so I have a really cool stat here from your rookie season to this point. So you shot 40% from three with 91 made through 49 career games. Now only two players ever have shot a higher three-point percentage 
while making this many through 49 games. And that's Daniil Gallinari and Duncan Robinson. So you are in a pretty good spot there from a shooting perspective. I mean, we knew coming into this season that you were a great three-point shooter, but just what are some of the things you've been able to do throughout the season that have helped you take that to the next level and continue to build that craft? Well, the biggest part of it, honestly, is the fact that I have guys around me like Ricky, Devin, Ty, Javon, Mikhail, DA, people who just draw a lot of attention, Kelly. Um, and that kind of leaves me, you know, hey guys, if my guy moves off of me, I'll be waiting. Um, and that's just been really beneficial to me to have guys around that can create and, and, caught and attract so much defensive attention. Um, and then other than that, just the usual, getting rec reps up, um, keeping my shoulder as healthy as I can and, and trying to have a short memory with the misses. <laughs> Ty, I mean, Cam just mentioned a whole bunch of your teammates' names. You guys have talked about the camaraderie amongst you guys and just how good this group is. When you were coming back from injury or if you did face any adversity throughout the season, how helpful was it to have such a good group of guys to help bring you along and and boost that confidence within you? Yeah, it was super helpful. Um, like Cam said, we had such a great a great group and we had really high team chemistry. Uh, all the adversity we went through as a team, not only I, that I went through. Um, so when I first came back from that injury, I kind of got thrown into the fire a little bit um, and the ups and downs. But anytime my number was called, everyone was just encouraged me to like, be aggressive, be your game. Um, so that really helped me, um, just not being afraid to make mistakes because my teammates were always always had my back. So that, that would definitely help me. And it also just made um, traveling and long road trips more enjoyable like off the court too, just being around the group of guys we had. Um, definitely a special year. Um, you know, you hear horror stories when you're in college about like how vets could treat some rookies. So like the group the group we had is definitely special. Um, and they, they definitely made it easy on us. Okay, which one of you has Poppy Chula? Where is the team dog right now in this situation? Oh, he's for sure with Kelly. He's okay. for sure with Kelly. I was just babysitting because um, I, I, I'd assume Kelly just didn't want to carry him around. And that's kind of a rookie thing. If somebody doesn't want to carry something, the rookies carry it. Um, the Poppy Tula was most certainly with Kelly Oubre. Okay, just we had to check on the team dog just to make sure he was good too. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining us. The last thing I've got for you before we let you go is just your message to Suns fans because I know they all miss you and I know you guys miss them as well. So, Cam, we can go ahead and start with you. Um, Suns fans, thank you guys for all your support this year. Um, we've appreciated it so much and we're looking forward to get back on the court. Um, we're going to be back out there soon, um, and whenever we do, we'll try to do our best for you guys, and we appreciate you guys coming back game after game. It can't make really me much to say, so um, just everyone, make sure you guys do your part to stop this, stay inside. Um, I know it's tough, but definitely um, listen to you guys, and hopefully see you soon. Well, Cam, Ty, thank you again for your time. It's been fun catching up with you. Try not to... Uh, Get too bored out there while we're staying at home. And uh, thanks again for joining us for Valley Chats, brought to you by First Bank, the official bank of the Phoenix Suns and the Phoenix Mercury. We'll see you next time.